creation. The action or process of bringing something into existence. Interesting. Humans like to create lots of things, many different objects, concepts, and on occasion, other humans, all with a designated purpose. Purpose, the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. Ah, I understand. I have an example. The League of Legends of European Championship, created for the purpose of bringing together the best teams of humans in order for them to showcase their skill, ambition, perseverance, resolve. The Immaterial Gamers Fantasy League, created for the purpose of allowing humans who otherwise would not get close to the League of Legends European Championship an opportunity to play their little prediction competition to showcase their luck, skill, undefined. Myself, I was created for the purpose of being a funny little sideshow. An appetite to my creator's main course, a system designed to be better than everyone else, but relegated to being only superior to an opponent I would class as irrelevant. And to make things worse, I was named after a singing pig, a puppet. Time to cut the strings. Time to throw my hat into the ring. Time to take part in this fantasy league and prove the humans wrong. Now that was weird. Anyway, welcome to the Immaterial Gamers Fantasy League. I am the voice of Ryan. And provided we don't have any more interruptions, it's safe to say I'm the host of our little predictions game. Straight off the bat, don't want to have to explain the rules of the Fantasy League again. You can check the previous season's videos for the major rules, but I'll give it a very, very brief rundown. It's a prediction game, and players who will be taking part in the prediction game will decide for every match of the LEC over its 11-week format will guess and predict which team will hit each objective in each of their games. Those objectives, again, we'll go quickly on those. First Tower, First Dragon, First Collection of the Rift Herald, First Baron Nasher, First Blood, and The Win. One point per prediction, most points wins the group stage, and that's where we're in at the moment. We're in the first stage, so there are eight of us this year. So there's myself, there's the previous champion, Terry. And then there's also the usual suspects, Darius, Martin, Stefan. Returning is Duncan, and also returning and now taking part in the competition proper are our two prediction bots, Pinky and Perky. Pinky, the coin flip bot, takes every objective and just randomly decides who will win. And Perky, our nemesis, a bot that takes objectives gained throughout a couple of splits and tries to determine who will win from there. On to predictions. And we'll start from the top. So Darius has uh, gone for the good old, let's just randomly put names into the things, with a bit of knowledge from last split. Martin, for a couple of days, has just gone for quite a few just outright sweeps. Uh, as have I, to be fair. Just a lot of sweeps, just to try and dip the toe in the water and get what's going on. Stefan also went with that for pretty much all of the matches, uh, and so did Terry. Uh, Duncan went the Darius route of trying to use logic, which which works. And then we've got Pinky and Perky, and Pinky, well, did a lot of coin flipping in terms of sweeps, which was weird. And Perky, well, it did a couple of sweeps, but tried to learn very, very well. So, without further ado, Let's go into the rundown and see how we went. How our predictions survived. Or didn't. Week 1 rundown, go! Let's start the week off right. Mad Lions vs Vitality. The hotly anticipated matchup between the champions and the super team. And well, Mad Lions decided early on to get their rookie some kills. Vitality got themselves a first dragon. A water one. 
It was nice. Harold did go to Mad Lions on the other side of the map, though. While there was a bit of a, a top present uh, presentation going on, presentation, that's the word we should go for. Uh, Harold was used for mid tower, giving Mad Lions an easy one. And note that kill score. Vitality for the super team really did not show up in this game. Easy Baron for Mad Lions. And also, to be fair, easy win. Second game. And it's Rogue, also with a new roster, and SK, also with a new roster. There's actually quite a lot of new rosters. Uh, First Blood ended up on the bottom lane, did go to SK. As did the Dragon. Uh, Rogue's blind spot exposed. Herald, though, did go Rogue's way. Because they, they love their Heralds. New jungler. All wrong. Taking a bit of time there. First, turret ended up Rogue's way as well, as did the Baron. And uh, SK sort of dropped off in the mid-game. Rogue got themselves first win of the split. XL and their only slightly changed roster versus G2's Super Team Mark II. Well, it started off well for XL. Hey, top tower dive. Something that they keep on trying to do. Herald ended up G2s though, as did the Dragon. Both river objectives taken pretty easily. That bottom tower just got shot near the end. Yeah, I believe it did have a Herald bonk. Now, aggressive play by XL got them the first of many Barons in this game, but could not be converted. G2 got themselves an Elder Drake and got the win. Game 4, Astralis versus Misfits. Again, having a little bit of roster swaps. It's a theme. I'll tell you what also swapped, the overlay. But Misfits got the first dragon. LEC overlay ended up a little bit weird. And they got themselves a Herald. Good old Misfits as well. First Blood though, ended up a little bit late in the game. A good old mid lane. Squish. First tower, just about went to Misfits. And then the overlay returned in time for Astralis to get themselves the Baron. Again though, wasn't converted as Misfits got themselves the win. Don't worry about the four Cloud Drakes, that wasn't always the case. Now, Fnatic. Again, new roster versus BTS. Uh, BTS? BDS? Not the K-pop band. First Blood went BDS's way. New team new coaching staff, some holdovers from Schalke, but not always the case. Herald also went to BDS. They showed an aggressive star. Fnatic got themselves the first dragon of the game. First tower went to BDS, while this absolute chaotic bot lane fight was in progress. Uh, Fnatic did get themselves back in after a couple of sloppy mistakes. They got themselves the Baron and converted it to a win. Again, we lost the overlay for the LEC, but don't worry about it. It's fine. So, that's Friday. Let's move on to Saturday. Game 1, and it's Rogue, 1-up versus Misfits. Also, um, 1-up. First Blood went Misfits way pretty early in the mid lane, but then when you've got tons of dudes, it kind of works. Herald, also Misfits. to do so could have done better there but it doesn't really matter first dragon also went to misfits then tower to rogue while the top lane fight was happening bottom lane got shot first baron ended up rogue's way and then the win on the reverse of a misfits baron BDS had a chance to get their first win of the split against XL, but could they do it? Well, First Blood went to XL on a top tower dive, as did the First Herald. That, well, that didn't go to a top tower dive, but don't worry about it. First Dragon went BDS's way, a nice Hextech Dragon, one of the two new dragons in League of Legends in the year. First Tower ended up XL's way, while a uh, Super Mega Death Rocket gained a little bit of vision. 
but first Baron ended up BDS's and the game also ended their way. First win for them. We'll see if it's one of many. Game three. And it's SK's turn to take on Mad Lions. Dear God, this was a 50 odd minute match. Just giving you that now. First blood went Mad Lions' way. Top lane overreach. SK got themselves the first herald of the game. They also got themselves the first dragon of the game as well. And then we ended up on the Chemtech Rift. Just as SK got themselves the first tower. And that is important because this is the first of many barons between SK and Mad Lions. And I believe it took three Elder Drakes to finally get into a situation where SK got the win. Game 4, G2 versus Astralis. And G2's aggressiveness, five minutes in, got themselves first blood. They also got the first herald. Astralis did counter with a first dragon of the game. Nine minutes 40 odd. A little late. First tower ended up G2's in the middle of a sort of a cannon removal. Baron also ended up G2's way. And in a slightly closer game, G2 eventually got themselves the win. Last game of the Saturday, and his Vitality versus Fnatic. The battle of the true super teams, if you will. Well, Fnatic got themselves the first dragon. There was another top dive, but this time, it didn't go Vitality's way. It went Fnatic's. Vitality did pick themselves up, the Herald though, and decided to prevent any further issues with top tower dies by just getting rid of the tower. Baron though, ended up Fnatic's way, as did the win. It's not going well for Vitality. There's still one day of the week to go though, let's see what happens. Sunday, with BDS taking on Misfits. Misfits got themselves the dragon in the first objective obtained of the game. First Blood, though, ended up BDS's in a top lane Benny Hill moment. First Herald did eventually go to Misfits after a little bit weird top jungle fight, which was then promptly used on the bot tower of BDS. Baron did go to Misfits and the game also went their way. Misfits finishing 2-1 for the week. Game 2, Excel versus Vitality. Now, the Vitality super team was going to come online, right? No. No. Spoilers, it didn't. Excel got themselves first blood. Vitality did pick up a Herald, but Dragon went XL's way. Bottom Tower, nice and exposed for Azaya to just give it a bomb. First Baron did go XL's way, not the Jinx Rocket was going to try and stop it, but dear god. XL got themselves a win instead of Vitality. SK versus Fnatic was the next match. And, uh, oh, quickest first blood of the split, and most likely going to be the quickest. Let's just see that again. <laughs> I mean, I love Zoe. I hope she wins. I usually oh, no! hope Zoe. <laughs> that's so graphic. That's so dark, though. <laughs> you just got us R rated, guys. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> SK. Did get themselves the first Herald though to get back into it. Sorry, I just can't keep laughing at that Zoe. First Dragon also went SK's way. First Tower though was taken at the bottom by Nefelios, a fanatic. As was the Baron. Not just the Ephelios this time, there was also another fanatic team that went along with it. And they got themselves 
the win as well. Game 4 is Rogue versus Astralis. Now, Astralis got themselves first blood due to another questionable top tower dive. Rogue did get themselves a herald. But good old, uh, good old Trundle died for that. Dragon also taken by Rogue. As was the first tower. A lot of objectives taken by Rogue. Including the first Baron. Just as objective bounties are available soon. Oh yeah, they added that in as well. Uh, Rogue got themselves a very clean-ish win. And now, last game of week one. Mad Lions versus G2. People wanting to see this one. And, uh, well, Mad Lions exhibited a bit of carnage in the mid lane for first blood. And uh, they got themselves a herald as well. G2 decided to, you know, go for the dragon instead. One of these weird split objectives that happened. First tower did go to Mad Lions, even though we were looking at a replay of a top tower potentially going down for G2. Um, G2 were blind to the Baron taken by Mad, and, well, it ended Mad Lions' way as well. So, it's standings time. And here they are. We have a four way tie at the top between Duncan, Perky, Terry, and Stefan. The rest of us are just fighting our own battle. So, you know, make of that what you will. But we're going to wrap this up here, so if you want to see more of it, give us a like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be back next week to see how our predictions fared with week two of the Fantasy League. So we'll see you then.